problem. Let's bring in Stephen Moore, former Trump advisor, and Robert Wolf, former Obama economic advisor. Welcome to you both. First Happy off, New though, Year. Robert, can I ask you about this? Happy New Year to you both as well. I've missed you guys. Um, let me ask you first about this moment where President Biden shared with the public how he learned of higher meat prices. Watch. My wife was there with her sister and a good friend named Marianne, and she was saying, do you realize it's over $5 for a pound of hamburger meat? $5? So first off, Robert, that struck me as odd because this has been a problem for the American family for quite some time. Higher prices going to any grocery store. Granted, the president's not stepping into a grocery, but certainly it should be on his radar that meat prices are sky high. Yeah, well, I mean, Sandra, I don't think that it is not on his radar that meat prices are sky high. I mean, the idea that he didn't know the exactly pound of, of burger uh, my guess is, you know, you're going back to the Bush days when you didn't know, you know, the price of milk. So <laughs> those, those are meaningless with respect to the American people. What the American people want to know is what he's doing about it. And I actually think his comment yesterday, like capitalism without competition is not capitalism. As a capitalist, is spot on. And I think it's OK to have a check and balance on the private industry when four companies have 85% market share. It's not an oligopoly, but it is four companies. And I would think Steve would agree with that comment. I mean, let's be clear, in the 1980s, it was Ronald Reagan, okay, who went after AT&T for, you know, their, comp their competition and their monopoly. Okay. So I think at the end of the day, in a post-pandemic world, having a check and balance on a few industries that a driving pricing is okay. And let me just finish. Well, it doesn't you exactly American sound like a check and balance. That's the just, problem. Well, it sounds seconds, more like seconds, placing blame. 10 seconds, 10 seconds. Yeah. You have the American Farm Bureau, which is probably 85% Trump voters supporting what Biden is doing. So this is not a blue or red thing. This is not political. This is actually a way to make sure we have the right check and balance. And this is a capitalist. But argument. it is placing, hold on, I gotta get Steve in here because it is placing blame squarely on the meat companies. You ask uh, Neil Bradley, Chamber of Commerce, EVP, he says perhaps Joe Biden should look at his own policies for what is driving prices higher. Listen, this is this morning. If it's not driving prices higher, then it's not a problem for consumers. What we should really be focused on are these other factors driving inflation. The demand increases produced by the pandemic, these inflationary policies from the Federal Reserve and from the Biden administration. Uh, this is an attempt to, to shift blame here. Uh, we don't have a problem with concentration in, in this industry. So he says they're shifting blame. But Steve, the president tried to pitch his, his, his solution to the problem, and he says that is to increase competition. Could that work? Well, look, I'm, I'm disappointed with the president and, and Robert. I'm, frankly, I'm disappointed with you. I mean, the one lesson that we should have learned over the last 40 or 50 years is that government price controls are, and regulations are, are not a way to reduce prices. In fact, you know, when we deregulated all these industries, whether it was the, you know, the electric power industry, the trucking industry, the airline industry, prices fell. We're not the Soviet Union. We don't want the government and the central planners telling us what the prices are. Robert, if you were right that there was some kind of monopoly in meat prices, why is it meat prices are just rising now under Biden? I mean, they didn't rise under under Donald Trump. You had the same kind of situation. And incidentally, don't forget, Sam, Sandra, uh, Joe Biden also blamed the high oil prices on the oil companies. I mean, he just keeps blaming the Fair industry point. for the higher prices when, in fact, what we have is inflation in virtually every industry right now because we have too much borrowing, too much government spending and too much money printing. You know this, Robert. You are a banker. You can't just flood the zone with all this cheap money and not expect prices to rise. All right, I'll let Robert respond to that. But first, I just want to tell you, you know who does disagree with the president's plan? Larry Summers, a former <laughs> economics of the Obama era, saying the emerging claim that antitrust can combat inflation reflects mm -hmm. science denial, he says. Right. There are many areas, areas like transitory inflation where serious economists differ. Antitrust as an anti-inflation strategy right. is not one of them, Robert. Well, there's a lot to unpack, and it's not the first time that Steve was in dis was disappointed in me. 
Um, and my guess is no, just no different that I've been disappointed in him. His trickle down hasn't worked for now 40 years. That being said, we should just be clear that when you compare today versus the Trump presidency, during the Trump presidency, the pandemic closed the economy. We're reopening the economy. That's why prices are going up. It has nothing to do with it has okay. nothing to do okay. with Okay, there's a lot to unpack there. It, it's just We're out of time, time now. <laughs> Robert, okay. inflation was two percent. Inflation was two percent under Trump and it's six percent under Biden. You gotta explain that and, one. Okay, and, all right, and right, right. six million jobs in one year, we lost jobs under Trump. I mean we can go back and forth all day. Oh Robert. Oh boy, we've got well, a we lot. We've got, we've got, we're gonna jobs. continue the conversation. Wait, we we'll have you back soon. I'm out of time. Come on, look at look at the data. Look at the data. I do. Every day. All day. Thank you very much, Robert. Thank you, Steve. <laughs> Thanks, Sandra.